Hey y'all, I hope you're doing well. It's your girl, Dr. Nina. And today I'm excited to switch gears because some of y'all have called that I've talked about the fact that I do and have been diagnosed with adult ADHD. And I was diagnosed in my mid to late twenties. And it comes as a shock to some people because I'm a clinical professional who helps to diagnose said disorder. So with that said, it's weird to be on the other side of the table too, but I tell you it has been a blessing since figuring this out and knowing more about myself. And I will say for some of us, especially if you came up in a highly structured, highly religious home, we know that a lot of times you didn't have a lot of time to show a lot of behaviors. My home was very discipline driven. My mother did not play when I was coming up, okay? And so a lot of times, not just on her end and not necessarily on her end, cause she did a wonderful job, especially after adopting me and taking great care of me. But you know, a lot of times we thought of ADHD kids as having a problem or being bad, quote unquote, and that's not always the case. So being in a structured home didn't allow that symptoms or those symptoms to come out. So what is ADHD? It's attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and it comes with three types. It is inattentive, hyperactive, and a combined type. I was diagnosed with combined type. And I will say that since receiving that and knowing how they connected to my childhood, being boisterous, being uh, uh, more of a classy class clown, if you will, um, well-timed with a comedian, always putting my energy into various different things. Even when I first got into college, being involved in so many different things, I just need a lot of stimulation sometimes. And that's changed over the years, but it helped to make things make sense, you know? Um, and especially going through that in childhood and seeing how that progressed into adulthood. And let me say this, that it is usually found more in childhood. It's a childhood, usually neurological disorder. And a lot of adults go underdiagnosed. And for me to be diagnosed later in life is really unheard of. The two treatments together is the best, you know, medications plus your good old fashioned therapy and things that really bind together to help you be whole. I chose not to medicate because I was able to channel my energy and put it into things that were really amazing for me and my life. But everyone is different and they should not be shamed for the choices that they make. So today I wanna make sure we talk about that, talk about, you know, what led to this diagnosis and some of the key factors that I saw that made me more aware of the issues that I had. So make sure that you comment, talk about the things that you've gone through. If you've dealt with adult ADHD or even childhood ADHD that progressed, let us know. And I'm going to share some of the resources that I have down below. Let's get into this video. Restlessness is a huge one, y'all. And what it ends up looking like is this. For kids, it can be inability to sit still, interrupting others or squirming in your seat. But for adults, it can seem like you never can relax. Like you cannot just sit there and enjoy a movie movie or watch something or engage with someone, it, it seems like your mind is always somewhere else. You're restless. And also what it translates into as adults is it's hard to sit in on meetings. I don't care if they're for work. I don't care if they're for church. Your mind just starts going above and beyond. You can't really sit on one idea. You have to jump, jump, jump. Sometimes in conversations, I know for me, uh, it can be difficult <laughs> to follow the track. I've learned to train myself to stick to the track, but sometimes I want to jump to something mainly because I think I'm going to forget it before I talk about it. And what I remember from the past, even being in undergraduate, when I first entered and I really didn't have the structure of my mother, I realized that that restlessness came through with school. I felt uneasy, anxious, and I failed my first semester. But that first year was so difficult and mainly because I couldn't rest. I couldn't figure out the things that aligned with my desires and what I liked and, and what was going to be good for me and my track of career. And I remember not even being able to tune in in classes. It wasn't because I wasn't bright or intelligent. I had always naturally done pretty well. And so what I had to do was to learn to, you know, take notes, make lists of my tasks, make sure that I was very careful about the things I involved myself in, and also keep my mind centered on what was in front of me. The next thing was getting or staying motivated on certain tasks. ADHD is marked with difficulties in something called executive functions. This is skills for planning, organizing, initiating, and sustaining attention. Most of the times people that have problems with these get overwhelmed with information. Have you ever seen like those GIFs where people are listening to someone talking and it's going in one ear and 
out the other and it comes out in another language, that's exactly what I'm talking about. They don't know where to start or organize tasks, so you just abandon ship, you just give up on it. So these people might look lazy or uncaring. So there's a list of things they fail to get to or manage and they might seem to be all over the place. And I remember even too in entering college where this became more pronounced is that I felt like a lot of times I would make lists, I would do these things, but I would never finish the things out. So I would start a project, start something for school, and then I couldn't finish it correctly. So I would always get a mediocre grade on it because I wasn't necessarily finishing the job. And especially if I got to something that was super boring or couldn't keep my attention, it was real easy to throw it away. And so the way that I stuck to it was making sure that I pieced smaller parts together instead of making these big goals that made it easier for me to follow and achieve said goals. So I was chaining my goals and training myself. It had to be broken down in order for me to achieve the smaller tasks at hand. And this leads me to extreme trouble focusing on tasks you find boring. This includes things that are boring, repetitive, and uninteresting. And you might be saying, Dr. Nina, look, most people have trouble focusing on things they find boring. But I'm gonna say to you that most people can eventually power through. Those with ADHD don't necessarily have that focus. But this can also show up in periods of hyper-focus. This is a big interest in something that you can do for hours at a time. So much so you might end up neglecting the other things that are important on your list of things to do. So for instance, I can remember a lot of times getting into things that I really liked and it didn't always have to do with a video game or something instantly gratifying, but like movies that I liked. I was like hyper-focused on horror movies and I had to watch one certain things or I would skip over other things in order to enjoy the things that I wanted to do. Even when I got into fitness and weight loss, that's all I wanted to do. And even though I was doing better in the world and doing better in school, I still would sometimes want to skip out on things that were very important as well in order to spend time on or hyper focus on fitness. So a lot of times it does not just play itself out by you not paying attention to things. You might have a certain thing that you are just so focused on that nothing else matters. And it seems like you really don't care about those other things even being achieved. I learned to be involved in various different things and to chunk my time up. So that's how I became president of so many organizations. I think people thought that I just like to be this high achiever, but I had to find a way to burn that energy. I was able to channel my energy, the high levels of energy that I had into things that were very meaningful across the course of my life. Disorganization can become very overwhelming and this is where the scatterbrain comes in. And what does that look like? Always looking for items you can't find. A haphazard approach to projects where a lot of things are left incomplete. Clutter or messiness in your home, office or car or other places you actually have control of. Difficulty putting things in order. Dropping things exactly where you are and never sorting them. Losing important bills, papers, documents or bank statements. Misplacing items. Sorting items into visible piles instead of putting them where they belong and storing things in places where they don't make sense. This is why I'm so hardcore with keeping lists and assigning spots for my items. Recently, we moved into a new home and even had some renovations done. With this, it was nice looking at expenses and places that we can cut back and most of all, staying organized. And that's why Rocket Money has come into my life. Rocket Money is an all-in-one personal finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. And they happen to be today's video sponsor. They help with so many things, y'all. But number one for me is canceling unwanted subscriptions. And when dealing with adult ADHD, baby, you forget about all those wonderful subscriptions and things that mm, maybe need to go. What they do is with just a tap, they help you to securely look at recurring charges and look at areas where you're spending a lot of money. And a lot of times those subscriptions pop up that you're not even aware that you still have access to, that you're not ever even using. And another area I love is that it helps to lower your bills. This happens from simply uploading a picture and tapping a button. And Rocket Money can negotiate your bills for you from internet service bills, cell phone, and even cable bills. And I've seen how they do it. They kind of run through that account and see where you can save. There are so many other options like setting up budgets, monitoring that credit score, which y'all know I'm all about, setting up a smart savings account, and growing your net worth. Download Rocket Money and unlock more features with premium. Go to rocketmoney.com forward slash Dr. Nina or click the link in the video description. Forgetfulness is huge and I could win an award here, honey. <laughs> yeah, it's rather chronic. 
And there could be things like starting a task and forgetting what you were doing, losing things even if you were just using them, forgetting important dates or appointments, retelling someone a story you already told them just because you forgot that you've told them before, momentarily walking away from a task, then forgetting exactly what you were doing when you come back. This could be forgetting your doctor's appointments or getting to a task that you only get half done. And friends or family might become easily frustrated with you because it might seem like you don't care about anything. And this could be because it's harder to filter out those irrelevant distractions that most people can filter through. And there's a problem encoding new memories and also retrieving old ones. So in my life, everything has to be organized and I have to know where things are. Every day, if I don't have my keychains attached, I will lose certain keys. And I'm not ashamed of it. My husband has gotten used to it and he's used to me saying, oh my God, I lost my keys. So we have a key place. We have a key spot. This is where you put things. This is how you keep them. And a lot of times, even other little things is so annoying. You'll have them and then you're like, who took it? <laughs> I say it a lot. Did somebody move my stuff? And it's mainly because my mind moves differently and I've gotten used to that. And yes, I found ways to work around that. That's why I must have basic organization and I must have things in their certain places because otherwise I do not remember where they are. So I save myself a headache by doing that. Time management, now that can be a biatch okay? It is what it is. People with ADHD tend or seem to be late, unsure of what needs to be done and when, and unsure about how much time they have to finish important tasks. We call it time blindness. So what this can look like is chronic lateness, feeling like time is passing too quickly or too slowly, problems making and keeping schedules, problems recognizing how long ago events occurred, and trouble knowing how long it will take to complete a task. And this can be so frustrating to you or to other people. And for me, this manifests in a way of being nervous about time. So even though back in the day, I would procrastinate like to no end, which is probably why I almost failed out of college. But now I get so anxious about time, right? So I will overestimate the time something will take. And I also think that that's a product of ADHD because even though, you know, the normal person might start a task a week in advance, I might find myself starting a month in advance. When we pack for a trip, I usually can't do it right before. Sometimes I can if my things are generally laid out, but usually I start to think about things way early because if I'm trying to do it the night before, it's going to go wild. I'm going to forget things and I'm also going to be anxious about the time that I had. I'm going to underestimate and I'm not going to spend enough time doing what's necessary in order to get done the things that need to get done. So if you see that, that could be a good symptom. Another thing is that being able to shift emotions is difficult. There can be so much of a struggle like controlling those emotional responses. This can look like having trouble calming down when mad, overreacting to relatively small stressors, becoming very frustrated with minor annoyances, difficulty focusing on anything other than your emotions, and experiencing certain shifts in mood and having outbursts of anger. And this can make it seem as if you are too or overly sensitive and even temporary mental or aggressive to others. And because of this, in some situations, adults get misdiagnosed with borderline personality disorder, bipolar disorder, and even depression. Now I'll share this as well. When I was in college and I went through the great weight gain, the changes, which marked a big time in my life where I didn't have a whole lot of structure. I realized, you know, that I was feeling these thoughts of depression and all of that. What I didn't realize is I was also dealing with ADHD. So depression looked like the overarching difficulty as opposed to ADHD. Those with ADHD or who have the symptoms of ADHD often also show symptoms of depression, mainly because we are usually cognizant of something going on that you know, might need some help with, but we're not quite sure what it is, especially if you've lived with it for so long. So I realized that depression wasn't the overarching factor, though I struggled with it, ADHD was. Once I knew that, I had a hold on the symptoms that had me and the things that I could do to change my life overall. And last but certainly not least, indecisiveness that is no longer cute can definitely get the best of you. What the indecisiveness looks like is an inability to commit to one decision, choosing randomly, feeling super overwhelmed when making a choice, 
even if it's small, letting others make decisions for you and worrying about making the wrong choice. And what it is sometimes is it's just hard to focus on the options. Working memory can also become a huge problem. It's the type of memory that allows people to hold and manipulate information long enough to make decisions from it. This meant that I was really in and out of relationships that weren't necessarily good for me. I was literally the type of girl that a dude would tell me I'm your boyfriend and then I find myself in a relationship. Sometimes just making a decision would make me so anxious. I would have to sit on it all night or think about it. Oh my God, don't turn on Netflix. And it's like a million movies in my face. It's so hard to choose. My husband sometimes, even God bless his soul, he will sit there and be like, look, we're just gonna pick one. Because I will go through all of these different previews and won't watch a thing because I have decision fatigue. And the way that I changed that was I started giving myself less options, okay? so. Instead of having 10 options or having five options, let's have two, except for when it came to dating. I'm gonna tell you all that. But I really had to make myself hone in on why I was making a decision and stand firm on that because ADHD can really mess with your self image and also help you to feel less self aware, more self conscious, and also have lower self esteem. So, those are the things you have to consider and think about ways for you to make best decisions for you. So none of this is given to diagnose you. You would have to go into a mental health professional and or other professional to help you get diagnosed. So keep that in mind. I just want you all to keep your eyes on the symptomology and the things that maybe could be considered. I know that going to those professionals, it can also be costly. So you wanna also make sure that you're ready for that and ready for a full gamut of testing and things of that sort. The reason why I say that is because because you don't just want to have a diagnosis you want to leave with answers and interventions and things that might help you on a day-to-day -day basis I was willing to get in the trenches this was at a time where I didn't really have a lot of money but I really wanted to get the help so that I could be more successful and I believe that that is the very reason for it is that I was able to go through that allow uh, there to be some conclusions to come to based on my behavior and multiple sessions so prepare yourself for that and a lot of times there will be psychological testing and other things that can be done in order for you to be led through the process and see what your specific type and symptoms are so you can work on that because all ADHD is not created equal. So with that said, make sure that you comment, share this video with someone who can use it and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching y'all. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace.